welcome to the Castle Talk podcast, where we talk to writers and creators of today's genre worlds from Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jason Henderson, author of the upcoming series, Young Captain Nemo from Fievel and Friends Macmillan Books. This week, we're talking to Greg Sestero, author of the memoir, The Disaster Artist, is about the making of the 2003 cult drama, The Room, and the author's friendship with the film's mysterious star and director, Tommy Wiseau. Sestero is an actor, producer, writer, and former international model. Uh, welcome, Greg. Glad to be here. Now, this book, The Disaster Artist, which is what the movie is based on, but the book is really, in my mind, two books. There's what you'd expect from people who are going to see the movie adaptation, which is this very interesting story of the making of the movie The Room. And there's also this really thoughtful and personal memoir of your relationship with this director, Tommy Wiso. Now, you met this guy in an acting class, isn't that right? Yeah, I met Tommy Wiseau in an acting class in July of 1998. Um, it was at Gene Shelton's Actors Lab, just above Union Square. And I was in uh, taking this class. And, uh, you know, acting classes can sometimes be a little boring. You, you know, you go up there, everyone's kind of nervous. You see yourself in each student trying to, trying to perform, trying to... Um, kind of grasp that um, acting ability and the scenes can be a little self-stayed and a little boring. And so um, (laughs) when Tommy went up there and performed, I mean, he was just electric. I mean, it was just, he was mesmerizing to watch because he was so out there and and out of touch, but he was, he was fascinating and and he would argue with the teacher why he was right and she was wrong. And I hadn't really seen anything like that before. And being 19 years old, um, being ready to give up, I felt like I, I wanted to find out who this guy was. And, um, and, and and while everybody in the class was kind of horrified by his attitude, I was, I was intrigued and, and I approached him to do a scene and we struck up this kind of unique friendship. It's, it's such a, when I, when I read this book, I mean, it's really very touching the whole thing. You, you, you get really personal and you show, you show sort of positive and negative sides to both of your personalities as it goes on through years of this relationship, because the story you, you frame it in terms of. There's the ongoing, there's the A story of the production of the movie, and the B story is these flashbacks. Um, I, I think, um, did it strike you? I guess what I wanted to ask is, were you ever worried about, hey, I'm going to tell a story about, about how odd my friend is and how odd our relationship has been? You know, did you feel like, like he wouldn't appreciate it or, or, or like, like, you know, I, I'm just curious how you approached that emotionally. So Tommy was the very first person I told that I was going to write a book. It was in April of 2010. We had just attended attended screenings um, at the Coolidge Theater in Boston, and I was very much uh, surprised at how many people were loving this film and showing up, and, and, and they would ask me questions, and I would share stories from the experience, and they just wanted more. They couldn't believe that, you know, Tommy and I had a backstory. And so I told them, I said, Tommy, I think this would make a terrific book. I think that would be my next step, because obviously with this film, it was didn't look like it was going to get acting work, and I felt like really my passion was storytelling, and I was getting did this, this incredible story and so I, I told him that and I interviewed him about his life in Paris and coming to New Orleans and some of his motivations and so he, he knew he was the first person to know that I wanted to write a book and really my goal with the book was to tell something you know inspiring and, and universal about what it's like uh, to follow your dreams and, and to have this kind of unique friendship so there was never any intention of uh, sharing something that would be um, you know negative on the whole it was more about um, you know it was more about it was you know told with heart and love and, 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 you know, I, Tommy is such a fascinating character and, and he, he wouldn't come off as great as he does, um, you know, if you just kind of shared stories about him being this wacky uh, film director yeah. who's always positive. I felt like he really needed to kind of share the, the darkness as well to, to round him out. And, um, and I think he comes off as a hero in the book. And I think ultimately, um, you know, I think he said he approves of the book 40% or, you know, he calls it the Red Bible. <laughs> Uh, but I think, he, you know, I think he comes off uh, very well in the film adaptation played by James Franco. I think a lot of his dreams came true with this, you know, and I think um, I think it worked out um, for the best. There's something you say in the book, and this is this is one of the most profound observations. You're 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 regarding Tommy's script, the script that you are, you know, you're very important in, in the room coming to be because you said you said something like you know, it's terrible, but it's, it's, it's great in a sense. I want to see this done, but you had this point about, 
I think it's the party maybe or somewhere where it's Tommy and he's sort of surrounding himself with people and friends. And he goes, but the things they complain about, the things they want. And you say, Tommy didn't know what he didn't know about the dreams of others. What is what does that mean? What, what do you do you remember what you, think, what you meant when you wrote that? I th- you know, I think with the room, it's it's always kind of I feel like this cry out for help of like Tommy has a lot to offer. He just hasn't been able to communicate it in a way that people would understand. But I the way I was introduced to him, um, I understood that I saw the lovable side of, of Tommy and, and the, very much the human side of him early on. And so he just wants to be accepted and loved like all of us do. And he just said that he's a very different way of communicating. And therefore, you know, he tends to push people out of his life. And, you know, I'm sure all he wants is a birthday party in which there are a bunch of his friends there singing happy birthday and just kind of sharing intimate yeah. moments that are simple um and and that's was his goal was to reach out and connect with people through the room i think that's why he made it you know what it reminds me of most actually but i know you hear ed wood all the time but i think there's as much jay gatsby in here as there is ed wood where you know gatsby created himself you know he came from wherever he came from he had ultimately a human background that was not all that interesting if you really knew it, but the mystery was interesting. And Gatsby was throwing these incredible parties and spending this incredible money to be this person that he had invented. But what strikes me is you, as a 19-year-old model, you know, you're Nick. Yeah, that's what um, a lot of people said when they first read the book. Um, you know, and the goal with the book was to kind of tell, you know, have it read like a nonfiction novel. And, and, and again, my goal was for the book to become its own film. But um, yeah, a lot of people, when the book first came out, talked a lot about Gatsby and, and um, how it how it kind of felt like that as well. I mean, initially my inspirations, you know, where I felt the story fit, you know, was Ed Wood, Sunset Boulevard, you know, a little yeah. bit of the talented Mr. A little bit of the talented Mr. Ripley, Boogie Nights. But um, that is that is a great great comparison. When you uh, when you say you you were thinking about movie making, were you actually? I mean, did you in your head have this vision? You know what? Someday somebody is actually going to recreate this bizarre set and put it on the big screen? I was thinking more about the, like the friendship aspect, the character story of, of you know, Tommy and I, and um, that's where I felt like it was cinematic. You know, the making of the room sort of follows that, but I really wanted it to be a character story. And so absolutely yeah. when I, when I was working on, when I first was starting work on the book and I spoke with my co-author, Tom Bissell, you know, I said, this, this could be the next Ed Wood. And in fact, the night before we started working on the book, we watched Sunset Boulevard. I think it was Tom's first time seeing it. And he immediately got it that this, you know, this could be a film and so that was really the goal um yeah. coming out of the gate was uh, to take something that was considered the worst movie ever made and write a story that that would be first rate and could make its own film and this time this one would be, would be good that's really fabulous i mean i, I in fact i think i think this is a movie that it it belongs in a sentence with ed wood well it god there's so many layers here because there's this film that just got made based on your book uh which i haven't seen yet it actually it comes out here uh next week so i'm going to to watch it you i mean you've seen it obviously were you just introducing it in in austin yeah i um uh it's it's really incredible the audiences love it they walk out very inspired um you have people here that have never seen the room have never heard of the room older couples that um just love the movie they're fascinated by it and and touched by it um and so that was again that was a goal i had with the book was to to tell a story you wouldn't need to have seen the room to appreciate and um and they followed that you know james franco as tommy was was one of the best performances i've seen in a long time i've seen the disasters now like seven times and i love it you know more and more with the with each feeling so um, and the audiences are, are flipping for it. So it's, it's a great, really a great feeling. I'm, I'm wondering when you, it seems like a particular challenge to, for an actor, a good actor to imitate an actor who, where acting is not their skill. And we've seen it a thousand times in different movies where, where somebody pretends to be a bad actor. What is it about somebody who can't act that is difficult for a good actor to, to imitate? I mean, in other words, what is it that, what is so special about acting that it's so hard to do and so hard to do badly even? I don't know. I think with Tommy, I don't know. It's like Tommy is such a captivating actor. He's not traditional. He's more of a performer than an actor. And I think I always saw Tommy as a larger than life character who really um, was just fascinating to be around. And you watch him on the screen and he's really the engine of the room. I mean, you, every scene he's in, you can't take your eyes off of him. So as a bad actor, I don't know if I'd say he's a bad actor. He's not 
technically sound. But what's amazing what James did is James built Tommy from the inside out. He didn't try to like mm. make him a caricature, imitate him. He really built the character of Tommy that when you watch him for a hundred minutes, you understand him, you relate to him, you're frustrated by him. Um, and he, he honored Tommy in a way. And I think if you're ever going to portray somebody like that, who's con- you know, considered not classically talented, um, you know, you need, to, you need to understand them. And, and, um, and just with the mannerisms and, and the accent, James really, you know, created Tommy um, in a way that I didn't think was possible. And I think acting is just something, it's a skill that exists within you. um, And I think that's just what James has. Wow. Do you, uh, so, so this, this book is a big hit and, and, uh, and by the way, I think the character, it's such a great, I I can totally see what you're talking about with the two hander part, the relationship bits, the, the accent that you've built for Tommy, which is accurate is brilliant i mean it's a very cool book are you planning on continuing writing i mean is that a thing you want to do or is the memoir enough or or what's your plan yeah storytelling was always my biggest passion when i was 12 years old actually i saw the movie home alone uh and i just i loved it so much i wanted to be in that world and so i wrote a sequel to home alone and wrote myself a part opposite macaulay culkin and i actually uh, (laughs) was was crazy enough to submit it to john hughes at the time um you know, I found his production company and as all 12 year olds should do. Um, and, uh, you know, I got a letter back ultimately, the movie didn't get made, <laughs> right. but, uh, that was really, yeah, it was really my first love of storytelling. And, um, that's what was so great. He took the time to answer you. He wrote, he wrote you back a, a note. I think he was just stunned that a 12 year old went, you know, when it did that. And so, you know, when I got to work on the disaster artist and finally have creative control over a project and collaborate, you know, with, with, uh, Tom Bissell, who's a terrific journalist and author himself. Um, I, I just love the, you know, I love storytelling. And so I, you know, definitely would want to continue that. Um, I recently worked, uh, wrote a screenplay that uh, puts Tommy and I in the same film for the first time in 15 years called Best Friends. Mm. Um, and so that was great to kind of combine those two passions with, you know, writing out a story and then producing a film um, based on that story. So I'd like to really continue to do that, you know, write and produce films, whether I'm in them or not, doesn't matter as much. Um, cause I enjoy, um, being behind the camera camera as well and watching these scenes get made. So just getting back to creating, um, and, and producing stuff, I think is very rewarding, um, more so than anything else. Is there, is there a kind of inspiration? I always want to know, you know, it, like I watched Ed Wood and I haven't seen disaster artists yet, but I feel it's much the same thing. I watch Ed Wood with fascination because I think any artist has to always ask, am I this guy? You know, am I talented? Do I know what I'm doing or am I fooling myself? And I'm this guy. And, you know, and, and then it gets more complicated because Ed Wood's ex-wife said, in fact, what Ed loved most really was just being a director. He loved having the megaphone and sitting in the chair. He almost didn't care about the product itself. And I thought, you know, is there, what kind of inspiration can one draw from the disaster artists? You know, if, if they're, if you're a young artist, I mean, what, if you're like a 20 something uh, who's maybe thinking of going to Hollywood or writing a screenplay, what can you learn from this? Well, here's the thing. We all have a creative voice. Um, and if we're inspired enough to try to create something, nobody knows what's going to come out. You know, nobody knew that the room would affect people the way that it did. Everybody told Tommy no. So many people told me no um, across the board. And so that's the beautiful part of creating or filmmaking is is we don't know. It's the best thing you can do is try and put it out there and um, and see what happens. You know, I, I think the worst thing is not to try. If your heart's yeah. in the right place and you follow your dream and you produce something, nobody likes it. At least you at least you did it. And if they love it, then you inspire people and entertain people. You know, I've seen so much joy on people's faces from watching the room or people coming up to me and saying they listened to the disaster artist audio book and, and then they loved it and it kept them company. And, you know, that's really the reward is, is, is you know, entertaining people. And um, I think you should always try if, if you have a passion for something, get out there and find a team of collaborators that want to create and that have different talents and, and try to put something together and, um there's a lot of reward just in that. That's beautiful. Uh, gosh, Greg Sestero, I really appreciate you being on. The book is called The Disaster Artist. It is fantastic. If you're planning on going to see the movie The Disaster Artist, which is coming out right now, uh, I recommend that you pick up the book. 
Kindle or Real or whatever and you know, read it because it'll keep you up all night and it's and it's just a fascinating read and and it is very deep and it's very moving and it's very well written and uh, I hope you have you continue to have fantastic success with it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Jason. Absolutely. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, sir. Take care. Bye.